This video is on objective three. I can find the key features of a quadratic function from a graph. So some of this vocabulary you should have seen in some of the two previous videos you needed to watch, but this is just gonna help you fill out your notes and make sure you understand all of the pieces that you need to. So first off, we know that the graph of a quadratic is called a parabola. It's kind of a weird word, but it is pronounced pa Parabola. Parabola. So it's that U shape. So a standard form of a quadratic function is going to be f of x is equal to ax squared plus bx plus c. A has to be a number that is not equal to zero. Because if it were equal to zero, the x squared term would go away, thus making it no longer quadratic. So it has to have that A term. B and C can be there or not, but A is very important. So in a quadratic, you have some key pieces. So the first key piece is the vertex. And the vertex is the turning point on the graph. It is the only point that does not repeat. It is the minimum or maximum on your graph. You will always write this as a point because it is a point. And you write points as x comma y. We see that it's at the very top or very bottom of our graph. The axis of symmetry is the imaginary vertical line that goes down the middle of the graph. It goes through the vertex of the graph. It's vertical. So when you write it, it's the equation of a vertical line. You have to write that x equals piece because otherwise it's no longer a line. Whatever the x value is of your vertex is the number that your x is equal to in the axis of symmetry. So this the axis of symmetry would be x is equal to x because I have it named that term. When you look at x-intercepts, we should already know what those are. Those are where the graph crosses the x-axis. That is true for always. You find it by plugging in 0 for y and solving for x, and you'll do some of that in the next unit. For now, you just need to be able to look on a graph and see where they are. There can be 0, 1, or 2 x-intercepts in a quadratic graph. We also call x-intercepts zeros, roots, and solutions. And remember that an x-intercept is a point, so we write it x comma zero. You can see in these graphs, if it crosses the x-axis twice, there are two, one here and one here. If it's sitting on the vertex is on the x-axis, then there would be only one x-intercept. And if the graph doesn't cross the x-axis at all, then you would have no x-intercepts. Remember that y-intercepts are where the point where the graph crosses the y-axis. This will always be the C value in standard form. There will always only be exactly one y-intercept. Every function has a y-intercept that we've talked about so far. There will be future functions that don't, but for what we've done, every one of them will have a y-intercept. You find that by plugging zero in for x. You can only have one y-intercept because if there were two, then you wouldn't have a function anymore because that would mean that the x value of zero has two outputs, thus making it no longer a function. So we see them right here on our graph. Again, remember <clears throat> the points you write it as zero y. A lot of times when we talk about the y-intercepts in context, it's the starting point because that's when time is zero. Domain and range. So remember that domain is your x values. So the domain of a quadratic function, because it will always go on forever and ever, will be all real numbers. We've written this in a couple of different ways. Negative infinity to infinity is writing it in interval form. You saw in a previous video that the domain would be that x exists as a real number. You just really need to think all real number, ooh, that's not the highlighter. All real numbers or negative infinity to infinity. 
because our graph goes on and on forever. There's not a single x value that we cannot plug into our function and get out a value. In late, next week, we'll look at key features in a context, and so we'll start talking about practical domain, but the general domain of a quadratic is always all real numbers. For range, you're talking about your y values. So this will always be from the vertex, from the vertex and up, or from the vertex and down. And that's because the vertex is the highest or lowest point. There's nothing below that vertex or above that vertex. So that's why it will, the vertex restricts your range. We can look at these examples and we can talk this out again. So remember, I'm gonna color code each of these. So the vertex is this point here. So it's the point negative three, negative five. So you wanna make sure that you find the vertex. It's the point that's not repeating, lowest point, highest point, the turning point, however you wanna think about it, that's your vertex. The axis of symmetry will be the vertical line that goes through that vertex. Since it's a vertical line, we know we need to write an equation as x equal, and then whatever the x value of the vertex is. When we want to look at the x-intercepts, we're looking at where our graph is on the x-axis. So there's two for this particular graph. So it's negative eight, zero, and two, zero. For the y-intercept, it's where the graph crosses the y-axis. So that would be, oops, that's not the right color, right here. And we can see that that is zero, negative 3.2. Notice that the vertex, x-intercepts, and y-intercepts are all a point, thus we write them as a coordinate pair, x comma y with parentheses around it. The axis of symmetry is a line, so it's written as an equation. This is the format that you want to use to write all of these answers. Now our domain for a quadratic, because we know there are two arrows up here, making our graph go on forever, which means that it goes from negative infinity to positive infinity. Our range is going to go from the bottom of our graph all the way up. So my lowest point on my graph is negative five. That is included, so I would use a square bracket. So it'd be negative five to infinity. Infinity is always rounded because we can't actually get to infinity. Now you take a second and you do this example. Take a second and check your answers. You can see that the vertex is 312. The axis of symmetry happens at x equals three. We have two x-intercepts, one at negative three, zero, and one at nine, zero. A y-intercept at zero, nine, and then a domain of all real numbers from negative infinity to infinity. The range here is a little bit tricky because now we have a maximum point. So that means our graph is gonna stop at this point up here. So it's gonna start down here and come all the way up to 12. So that means we go from negative infinity to positive 12. So it flips. So if we have a minimum vertex, it goes from the vertex to infinity. But if we have a maximum vertex, it goes from negative infinity to the, to the vertex. So now you're gonna to go to Desmos. You're going to type in each of these four equations down here for three, four, five, and six, and then you will list all of their key features. Remember when you're writing your key features that the vertex, x-intercept, and y-intercept are all written as points. The axis of symmetry will always be written as x equals a blank. When whatever the x for, whatever the x value was in your vertex. Once you've completed this, go to the answer key in Canvas to see that you got your answers correct.